Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making our own candy lollipops, spirals, candy with a pattern on the inside and sherbet filled candies. What you'll need to make these is some sugar, glucose syrup, water and some cream of tartar. Put the sugar and the water into the pan with the glucose syrup and place that over high heat. If you've got any sugar crystals on the sides of the pan, then you just want to wash those down using a wet pastry brush. Turn your oven on to 100 degrees C or 210 F and place a tray lined with non-stick baking paper in to warm up. Let your sugar mixture boil until it reaches 150 C or 302 F. Turn off the heat and stir through the cream of tartar. Now we'll follow this same basic process for all of our candies. For the sherbet filled one, add the yellow food colouring now and stir it through and then pour that into a warm tray that's been lined with baking paper. Now to protect our hands from the heat, we're going to use silicon gloves, but these are not going to be enough. So we're also going to use some cotton gloves underneath them. Oh, and let me show you my nails while we're here. These are one of the designs in my own line of wraps that I'm doing with Jamboree. These ones are called Yum and they have cute little ice creams on them and I'll link to them below. For those of you who asked last week what are wraps, they're a bit like stickers made out of nail polish and you use a little bit of heat to stick them onto your nails and they last up to a few weeks. We're going to put these ones through some rough treatment today with heat and gloves and in and out of gloves. Fold in the edges of the hot sugar towards the centre and then lift it up and begin to pull it out and then fold it back in. The more you pull it, the more shiny and opaque it becomes. If you want it to be transparent, then don't pull it much at all. Place it back in the tray and flatten it out as much as you can and then put it in the oven to warm up again. Now that it's warm, you can stretch it into a rectangle. Now usually when chefs make this sort of candy, they have a heat lamp shining on the candy that keeps it warm while it's on the counter, so you don't need to keep putting it back in the oven. But they're super expensive, so this is a good way to do it at home. Place a generous amount of sherbet down the center of your rectangle, and then bring the sides up and around to cover it, and push down each of the ends to seal in the sherbet. Squeeze it to make a cylinder shape and then place it back in the oven for about 30 seconds to a minute, just keeping an eye on it because you don't want to overheat it. Once you can just stretch it when it's soft enough to stretch, pull the candy to make a long snake. And then working quickly before it hardens, make firm indents along the candy so that you're sealing in the sherbet into each one. To make lollipops, we need a few different colours in the one batch. So place strips of foil along a tray and then cover that in baking paper. Prepare the candy just like we did before, but this time add a few drops of essence. I'm using a fairy floss flavour, you can buy all different ones and they just flavour your candy. Pour some hot mixture into each of the sections and then to get your pan clean, all you need to do is fill it up with water and leave it to soak and the sugar will just dissolve off. Add food colouring to each section in the colours that you're after for your lollipop. And then using scissors, cut along the baking paper so you can work with one colour at a time. Fold it into the middle and then stretch it until it becomes opaque. Make it into a snake and then set it aside. Repeat that with the blue and the red and the yellow and the clear one as well to make it white. Then warm them slightly again in the oven and place them together to make a cylinder and squeeze them so that they stick together. Cut the cylinder in half and leave some to keep warm while you stretch the other half, twisting as you stretch so you get that pretty pattern. Take a lollipop stick and poke it into one end and then wrap the mixture around and around, pressing it into place. And you can keep going to make your lollipop as giant as you want it to be. To make the spirals, remove the mixture from the heat and add in your flavouring. For this one I'm using musk. Split it into two sections and add red colouring to one half and blue into the other. We're going to take the blue half and pull it and stretch it to make it opaque, but with the red half we're just going to leave that and not pull it at all. 
Keep pulling the blue half and twisting it so that you can see there the more we pull it and the more we twist it, the more opaque and shiny it becomes. Don't pull the red half, just cut it in half to make two long cylinders. Pull the blue into two long snakes too and then stack them up to make a square. It looks a bit like toothpaste. Squeeze them together to round it out and then cut that into two. Working with one half, pull it and make it thinner into a nice thin long stick. And you can slice it while it's still warm to make individual candies or to make the spirals, wrap it around a thick skewer and once it's all the way to the end, you can just pull the skewer out and leave those to cool. And see how the pink there is totally transparent because we didn't pull it and the blue is opaque. The other thing you can do is roll some of this mixture into a ball to make round lollipops and just put a stick in one end. And you can make as many different candies as you like just by flavoring and coloring each one differently. And now for something which is going to be quite hard to do without a heat lamp, but I reckon we can do it. We're going to split the mixture into three and color some red, leave some plain and color the last section green. Pull each of the colors just like we've done before to make them opaque and then stretch the red one to make three long snakes. Return one to the oven to warm up. And once it's soft and pliable, place it across the top of the two red snakes and shape it at the top into a point. Add some white along each side of that triangle and then flip it up the other way and add a strip down the center on the top. And then finally add more white so that the red is completely covered. Warm your green and stretch it out and add it over the top of the white so that it goes all the way around. Now you're gonna to need to place that back in the oven to warm it up because remember those two red ones were quite cold by now. And once it's warm, you can just stretch that candy out into a long strip. Now to cut it without it shattering, it needs to be quite warm. So return it to the oven until you can bend it like this. And then quickly using a sharp knife, chop off pieces to reveal the little heart inside. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Click here for the recipe and here for my chocolate truffles and here for my YouTube channel. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.